Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven Haas, and today we are giving the Index Pick and Place a home base. There are a lot of things in a Pick and Place that need a place to live, that can't really live on the extrusion. It's not just about moving axes around. There's a lot of weird other auxiliary actions that a Pick and Place has to have, and there needs to be a place where all that stuff happens. The kind of things I'm talking about are like, up camera. There needs to be a place where the motherboard mounts and the pump mounts. Where does all that kind of stuff live? There also needs to be a place for the nozzle tip exchanger. The nozzle setup that I'm using is awesome because it just press fits these little nozzle tips onto the actual assembly that lets the air pass through that gets rotated by the stepper. So if you have a little holster that this can just pop into, grab a different tip, slide out, and then go pick up different size components, it all happens automatically. It's like a little passive tool changer. That needs to live somewhere too. Now some of you are saying, but Steven, you already have something like that. And you're right. Wah. Wow. Oh. This fiberboard panel has kind of been acting like that. It's been holding up my up camera, I've been mounting the motherboard to it, but it's made out of fiberboard. And, see that flex? Look at that! That is not good. It's especially not good because that's where the camera is mounted and if the camera moves really any bit at all, the depth of field on that camera is so shallow, the part will go out of focus when the nozzle's over it and it's trying to get a peek at the part. The camera should be rock solid. It really should not be moving up and down at all. First things first is getting this piece of fiberboard off of the pick in place. <laughs> it shall be yeeted. Yeet. Check this thing out. Oh crap. Little bit of an upgrade from that piece of fiberboard. <laughs> this is a piece of eighth inch laser cut steel. A little tell that it's laser cut is there's kind of like these little sparkles around each hole, which I can only assume is from the laser like entering into the metal and little bits of hot metal kind of skittering across the surface. Isn't that awesome? Ah, oh, I love it. It's so dope. I got this made at Osh Cut. It was like a hundred bucks to get this piece cut out. And this solves a million different problems with the whole mounting situation. First off, it is made of eighth inch steel. So this thing does not bend. It also adds a fair amount of weight to the machine, which should help keep it a little bit more stable when the head is moving really fast. For a pick and place, you want it to be a little bit heavier and have a little bit more inertia, so a quickly moving head is gonna shake a bunch of stuff around. It also has holes all across the whole surface. This arrangement of holes is actually called a peak array. It's something that Bunny Huang made in the Novena laptop. If you don't know who Bunny Huang is, I'll put a link to a video describing who he is. He's such a cool dude. But when he made this open source laptop, he wanted to make a standardized grid in the bottom of it so folks could add in their own circuitry or hardware or whatever they wanted. But essentially it's a 30 millimeter grid and then another 30 millimeter grid offset from that on a diagonal. And anyone can design something that fits onto this panel and interface with the machine really, really easily. I'm very excited about it. This thing just feels so cool. Like I wanna play cricket with it or something, even though I have no idea how to play cricket. Is that even how you do it? Do you do it like this? And I hear some of you saying, but Steven, I don't want to spend a hundred bucks to get a huge piece of laser cut steel. I hear you. This is not a good solution for everybody. There is a way that you can cut this out of acrylic or even fiberboard if you really want to and still have it stay super rigid, which I'm going to get to. But in the meantime, we're going to get this sucker mounted on the machine. Okay, so I may have solved this bowing problem for me now that I have this big old piece of steel. What if you actually do just want to use fiberboard or laser cut acrylic or something even more accessible to get your hands on, but you don't want this nonsense and your camera wobbling all over the place? Well, I'm going to redesign the mount for the camera and the ring light so that it actually has a foot. And the foot is going to come down and meet at the same plane as the bottom of the machine. So this whole thing is going to get way more rigid because the distance it's going to have to span is essentially half. And even more importantly, one of the points at which it is supported is right underneath the camera, which is arguably the most important point to keep the right Z height. Yeah, that's the sitch. Looks so cool. <laughs> I'm so stoked. Alrighty, time to grow a foot. <laughs> <laughs>
the little bit of bow that I had before, it's like completely gone now. I can put so much weight on this and it's just not going anywhere. It's not super necessary for the steel. It's really gonna come in handy when you're using something like fiberboard or acrylic. I actually left the inside of the foot open because the camera module actually gets incredibly hot when you're streaming video from it. I actually considered putting like a little like computer fan in there just to like blow air over the IC on the bottom of the board. The port that I had for the cable is big enough that air should be able to flow a little bit, you know, we'll get a little bit of passive convection going over there. Of course, this opening is going to be covered up by the surface that it's on, but at least it's not just like plastic. All right, so I'm going to design a little passive holster thing to hold probably like four nozzle tips. And the last thing is I have to get the pump actually mounted on here. The two versions of the motherboard that I've made so far devastatingly do not have the 30 millimeter spacing that the Pico Ray does. So I can't mount either of these to this panel, which is very frustrating, but I'm actually working on the next pass right now and it will have that spacing. So we'll get a motherboard on there. Come on, you little bugger. This array is also gonna allow for like little custom cable mounts and everything all around it. So I'll like have really nicely routed cables, all of these like little custom brackets that all bolt in. It's gonna be so pretty. And there we have it folks, passive tool changing, pump mount, super stable camera mounting. This thing is rock solid. And the thing that I'm really most excited about with this is not that I have a solution for the passive tool changing and a really solid camera mount and all that stuff. It's that now there's a standard. If I wanna change the camera mount or if I wanna change the way that the motor is mounted on there, I can, and it's really easy to without changing the panel. And if I wanna change the panel, maybe make it wider, whatever, I don't have to change any of the things that are mounted onto it. As long as I keep that grid spacing the same, for Gucci. And very, very sadly, I actually was not able to get the most recent motherboard controlling this machine. I had to use the first revision. And the reason is that for the life of me, I cannot compile Marlin to go onto the STM32 F4. I just, I can't get it to work. I've literally been trying for like three and a half, four weeks now. I just can't do it. <laughs> I've tried everything. Well, obviously not everything. I'm clearly missing something. So if you've ever compiled Marlin for an STM32 F4, or you have experience with STM32 in general, please hop into the Discord. I would love to hear from you. <laughs> Cause I do not know what to try next. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna pop in, or even if you don't have experience, pop into the Discord. It's a cool group of peeps. All right, that's it for this one. In the next episode, we are going to revisit the feeders. If you remember from the last time we worked on the feeders, we technically had the film coming off of the tape, but it was super messy. It was not working very reliably. It only worked for certain kinds of adhesive that held the film onto the tape. Not a good solution. Turns out there's a reason why most industrial feeders use an active peeling mechanism for the film. It's cause it's what works. So in the next version of the feeder, we're gonna give that a crack, along with getting RS-45 working, switching over to ARM, and some other goodies. It's gonna be good. I miss the feeders, they're fun. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help support me and projects like the Index, there's a link in the description where you can become a patron. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. But before I go, I wanna thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. I've been using PCBWay for boards for a hot sec now, and I have a bunch more boards coming in from them. I have this whole schedule for my videos. I know exactly what I'm gonna be posting up to like a month, two months in advance. So it is super important that I know exactly when the boards are gonna arrive based on the time that I order them. My whole video production schedule is based on that. I put a week aside from when I order boards from PCBWay to the time I get them in, and it is always less. That in conjunction with how cheap they are and how lovely they are once you get them, they're great. If you're looking for a board shop to make some of your designs, I highly suggest PCBWay. There's a link in the description if you wanna go check them out. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video.
Oh, oh my god. That hurt. Turns out steel is heavy.